Well guys, this is a pretty important story, and not just for America, but also the UK, because it is also something we have dealt with over here. You might all remember, back to the Peterborough by-election in May 2019, that was won by the Labour Party under rather suspicious circumstances, with a convicted fraudster helping run the Labour Party campaign that see the Brexit Party come in a close second with reports of fraud rampant up in Peterborough. If I remember rightly, it was actually record numbers of postal votes that won her that seat, showing we almost certainly have voter harvesting happening here in the UK at every election at least in the ethnic minority communities. Now, there have also been various reports in the UK of ballots being thrown away, multiple ballots being sent, including to uni students, which as a matter of fact have also been accused of underhand voter tactics. I think it was Brighton or Dorset Uni that was in hot water last year over it. On top of that, we have also had various reports over the years saying religious or community leaders will literally coerce people into essentially letting them choose who they vote for, which as you all know, will always be their friends in the Labour Party and its councils, much like we are seeing over in America now before the Democrats, so the American Labour Party, because we have had two reports out on the same day relating to voting at the upcoming US election. One involving Ilhan, I married my own brother Omar directly, that has been exposed by Project Veritas and the other exposed by President Donald Trump during a White House press conference. Add to that the Democrat-sponsored riots and it seems the Democrats themselves have declared total war on the President and American people in their desperate bid to win the election under Joe the Kitty Sniffer Biden. Let's hope it backfires hard, which it appears to be doing in relation to the riots at least. Now, starting off with Ilhan, Marry Me Own Brother Omar and Project Veritas exposing her Cash for Votes ballot harvesting scheme that whistleblowers have said is essentially an open secret at this point. James O'Keefe, the founder and CEO of Project Veritas said, ballot harvesting is real and it has become big business. Our investigation into this ballot harvesting ring demonstrates clearly how these unscrupulous operators exploit the elderly and immigrant communities and have turned the sacred ballot box into a commodities trading desk. O'Keefe said, we are showing Americans what is really going on in one of our great cities, but it is not me saying it, we have the operatives on tape saying it all themselves. Project Veritas said, its investigation found three locations inside Ward 6, a ballot harvesting triangle where the scheme operates, the Riverside Plaza Apartments, the Senior Citizens Community at Horn Towers and the Minneapolis Elections and Voter Services Office at 980 East Eppenin Avenue, which also functions as a voting location and ballot drop-off site. Jared Edge, the Chief Legal Officer for Project Veritas said that Mohammed and other ballot harvesters could face heavy penalties for their alleged violations of the law, which they actually go on to cite six federal and two Minnesota state laws at least being broken by Elan Omar and her team which could land them with like 20 years or more in prison. Now to find out more on this the best thing you can do would be to head over to Project Veritas's YouTube channel and check out the 16 minute video they have on the investigation that I will link below because there is far too much information in it for me to go through in this video and on top of that like I said we also had Trump laying out the evidence of mail-in voter fraud around the country much like we see in the UK except maybe this is even even worse because Trump lists like seven or eight examples meaning there is literally hundreds still flying under the radar. Like I said earlier we know that this goes on in UK cities like Manchester, London, Birmingham and many more. It is certainly rife within ethnic communities who will be bullied into voting the way the community or religious leaders tell them and are threatened with community exile if they refuse to follow the herd. Which is why I always say you have to remember American politics is very important to the UK politics in general because our left-wing politicians love to copy the Democrats, so seeing what they are doing over there essentially tells us what the Labour Party are likely to be preparing for the next local or national elections. It's actually pathetic how much the Labour Party copies them, showing the Labour Party has never had a good idea in its life, much like the Corbinated Chicken. But Breitbart picked up on Trump, laying out the evidence against the Democrats with this headline and short article that we will go through. It says, Donald Trump lays out evidence of mail-in voter fraud to reporters, who obviously won't report it properly, that's why we're getting it from Breitbart. We are gravely concerned about the Democratic assault on election integrity, Donald Trump said. The president cited the following stories questioning the integrity and stability of the mail-in voting process. Number one, in Brooklyn, 25% of mail-in ballots were ruled invalid during the June Democratic primary. 
Number two, in a New Jersey special election, nearly 20% of the ballots were thrown out and four people are being prosecuted for fraud. Which, wow, 20% of ballots thrown out, four people prosecuted for fraud? How come this is not major news all over the place when it actually occurs? The BBC are ready to report on some llama in some different country having a baby, but yet they don't tell us about the election fraud that goes on over in America. Number three, in a Florida primary, more than 35,000 mail-in ballots were rejected and over 100,000 ballots were rejected in California, which I'm sure you would agree is just like, wow, how can you have 135 mail-in ballots rejected? What the fucking hell is going on there? I'm pretty sure in the UK elections there is nowhere near that many of ballots rejected, not even fucking close. In Pennsylvania's primary, half of the counties were still counting ballots a week after the election. How is that even possible? Number five, the story of discarded military ballots discovered in Pennsylvania, many of them were cast for Trump. That really does not surprise me and I'm actually sure I've heard many more stories about this over the last year or so. Number six, reports in Wisconsin of free trays of mail containing absentee ballots were found in a ditch. And number seven, in North Carolina, voters reported receiving two ballots in the mail. Yeah, because obviously the Democrat want two votes for every person. And to be honest, they might actually need it to beat Donald Trump. Now I'm sure you would agree those seven examples there are pretty damning, especially when you factor in the amount of votes that are rejected or thrown away. And we've thought the Labour Party were bad for dirty underhanded tricks, it seems the Democrats are telling them to hold their beer, which like I said is very important because you can bet your bollocks to a barn dance that the Labour Party will be doing this in the next couple of years, and likely on a bigger scale than even the Democrats because as we know the Labour Party are never going to get in under the votes of the British people, they are the anti-British party of the United Kingdom. The Breitbart article continues though, the President also revisited the disastrous results of the 20. 20 Democratic Iowa caucuses. They still don't really know who the winner is, Trump said, referring to Iowa. I think they called somebody eventually, but it was many, many weeks later. The president also questioned whether Democrats should be meddling with how elections were being held in other states. They can't run a simple caucus, yet now they're trying to democratically write election laws nationwide just weeks before an election, Trump said. Because obviously that's what they do. Much like the parliament over here last year, they were trying to chop and change laws and destroy precedents so they could stop Brexit from happening and, of course, stop Boris Johnson from becoming Prime Minister. The Democrats over there are doing the same now because they failed in 2016 and had their ass handed to them by the God Emperor Donald Trump. It continued, the President argued that voters should still be able to vote in person in November. And yes, they should all be voting in person in November because obviously, as we can see above, the mail-in vote cannot be trusted. A bit like in the UK. He continued, there is no justification for these extreme changes to the election election law, Trump said, noting that if people could go to the grocery store with their photo ID, they should be able to vote in person. And that there literally says it all. If you can go to the shop, then you can go and cast your vote. But also, don't be surprised if the Democrats run around screaming saying they want to get rid of photo ID for voting because, as you know, Labour are dead set against it here. Now, I have got to say, the examples that Trump given are pretty serious. I can't actually believe it is that bad over there. I had seen various reports of different things, but when you collate them all together, it really does look quite shocking, which proves to me that the Democrats are up to no good. But that is obviously not really up for debate and makes you wonder what other dirty tricks they are playing as we speak that has not yet been found out. And as for Ilhan Omar and her voter harvesting, that does not really surprise me. The filthy spunk trumpet apparently married her own brother. There is a pattern consistent throughout history of oppressed people turning on the oppressors. Slaves against their owners, the peasantry against the feudal barons, colonies, Mr. Verhofstadt, against their empires. <laughs> and that is why Britain is leaving. And it doesn't matter which language you use, we are going and we are glad to be going. We're off. 